Hey chickens, me again, this time answering even more of your questions regarding the SpaceX Tesla thing. And this time I've been asking the experts. But before I analyse any more of your theories, I do have to make an apology because last time I said this, my guess is that it's either some kind of NASA specially produced polymers and rubbers, it's not plastic and metal at all, it's some kind of different material. That information is incorrect because of what Elon Musk has said. Let's take a look. Well, I think it looks so ridiculous and impossible. You can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> like, we'd have way better CGI if it was fake. And, you know, the, the, the colors all look, look kind of weird in space. There's no atmospheric occlusion. You know, you know, like, everything looks too crisp. But, we you know, we didn't really test any of those materials for, you know, is it space hardened or whatever, you know? So... It just has the same seats that like a normal car has. It's just literally a normal car. Well, today we're going to be further examining his claims. That older video of mine does exist on this channel, along with another video. If you want to check them out, they're all on this channel. So the question you guys have been asking the most is why in all the footage is there no stars? We're told that stars are easier to see in space because there's no atmosphere or light pollution. That's why telescopes aimed at seeing distant stars are in space because it's easier to see those distant stars from space. So why in all the footage do we not even see a single dot of light anywhere? So I took this question to Curora and they basically said that the stars are too dim and that the exposure on the video cameras was adjusted for bright sunlight because the Earth and the Tesla were brightly lit. This piece of evidence did remind me of an explanation by a science channel called Action Lab in which he takes the brightest flashlight outside. Let's take a look. The footage clearly shows a flashlight and some street lights in the background and because the camera is adjusted to those lights we don't see any stars. Footage also shows that the camera will always adjust to the brightest object. And of course you forget that stars are incredibly dim. So lighting is hard with the camera because the camera auto corrects for the lighting and so it's hard to tell when something gets brighter. It's literally like I'm holding a spotlight in my hand. Another thing which is hard to comprehend is the fact that we're always told that night lights always cause a massive amount of light pollution and yet we see none of the night lights on the earth. And we also don't see the moon. We're told that the moon is supposed to be relatively quite big, even though it's far away, so it looks smaller. And yet we don't see the moon in any of the footage. So why on earth do we not see the moon or any night lights on the earth? So the explanation regarding the night lights is pretty much the same. I mean, you can already see that the camera's overexposed on the light side of the earth. So it's no wonder that it doesn't pick the dim lights of the night lights. So the explanation I get with regards to the moon is simply because the mission was to get the burners burning and to test the payload of the rocket. It wasn't to get an image of a shot of the moon and the earth. Therefore, um, when you take a shot of the, an image of the moon and the earth, you have to make sure that the orbit is near enough and that you're um, shooting off from an angle which gets them both in. Um, and I don't think that was the mission priority. And also, the batteries on the Tesla only lasted for 12 hours, so you can only get 12 hours worth of images. And therefore, I think that they just didn't have the big, big enough window to get the correct image. You know, that's the explanation I get from Curora. Again, all my answers are coming from other people in this episode. So if you don't believe me, feel free to comment below. Do you want a cool Starman shirt? I know you do. There's a link in the description. Whilst I'm on it as well, if you've got any other conspiracies that are either related to this or totally not related to this at all, let me know in the comments below. So next up, we're going to tackle the foil ruffling glitch. So if you remember last time, I showed you this footage, which shows the foil to your right of your screen ruffling every so often. And I wondered what caused the ruffling. So a physics expert on Cura actually got back to me and said that the, it's actually caused by vibration. So when a rocket takes off, there's a great deal of foil exposed on any rocket's external surfaces. As the rocket assembly climbs through the atmosphere during the launch phase, foil covered surfaces would easily tear slash shred and are therefore only used when it's necessary to uncover something pretty much immediately after leaving the pad. So the thin insulating foil wrap covering components during powered operations in the vacuum, aka space, moves not because of buffering due to wind or turbulence, but because of vibrations induced from the rocket's motors, turbo machinery pumping fuel oxidizers, or from residual structures 
or vibrations. So if that was a bit heavy and sciencey for you, next it's game time. So many of you have been suggesting that the Earth is looping, so I wanted to take a look at some older screenshots of the Earth and see if they match with new ones to see if the clouds on the Earth are moving to see if it is looping. So this is the old footage I've had on my computer for a while now. And this is taken from the live stream today. Oh dear, the cloud formations and the images themselves are in fact the same. That's because the live stream on the internet isn't actually a live stream at all. It's a loop of the 12 hours of footage that the batteries could take. Part of me thinks that Elon Musk wants these conspiracies made about his company. Of course, the more conspiracies they make about your company, the more people talk about your company, the more marketing you get. So it's, it's a bit of free marketing out there for Tesla and SpaceX. Does this prove that conspiracy is true and the whole thing's a fake? Mm, no, it just proves that the live stream isn't quite live. But again, I'd like to know your opinion in the comments below. Next up, we're going to test the lens flare glitch. If you remember last time I showed you this weird lens flare effect where the camera flashes and then it cuts to an earlier point in the feed. Well, the explanation I get for this is that the rocket is traveling at 27,000 kilometers per hour. And sometimes data signals at that speed can't run properly. So it's essentially a data problem with the speed of the rocket running so fast. So the biggest question I raised up last time was why on earth doesn't the car melt in the radiation of the sun, given that it's in the thermosphere in the middle of space? So here's what Bill Otto, consulting optical physicist and systems engineer, had to say. I'm not sure why you think it would melt in the sun. It is slowly rotating, so it does not keep one side of the sun for long. At this distance from the sun, depending on the ratio of the absorption in the visible to the absorption in the infrared, the equilibrium temperature for a body placed in space is 210 to 350 kelvins. Even though 350 kelvins is pretty warm, it is not hot enough to melt a car. Remember that it is 93 million miles from the sun and headed further away all the time. So 350 kelvins is 76 Celsius and 170 Fahrenheit. So he's essentially saying it's not hot enough to melt it anyway. And because it's rotating, it's cooling down as quickly as it's warming up. And it's moving away from the sun as it's going. Now, other people have said that it will deteriorate with time. For example, the electronics will fry within a year due to radiation and it will get hit with cosmic particles. But it won't melt. One thing I would say to anyone that believes in the conspiracy is to have a look through a telescope or know somebody that has a telescope to find for yourself. And that's exactly what this next person I'm about to show you did. So this guy found an online telescope and he used it to try and find the Falcon Heavy rocket. And lo and behold, he found it. That image you see moving from the bottom to the top of your screen is indeed the Falcon Heavy rocket. And of course he calculated its trajectory and speed, etc. And it matched the exact speed and trajectory of the Falcon Heavy rocket. So it's now up to you. Do you believe in the conspiracy or not? Let me know in the comments below and subscribe.